What's going on YouTube? Carfi King here. You already know how it is. So today guys, I wanted to bring you um, an updated list for my Imperial Jamon uh, Purple Red Imperial for the BT11 format. Um, the reason really, really was because I, I really like Imperial and this is just a list that, you know, uh, that I've been tinkering around with. I think this deck is a few impactful cards away from really kind of taking off. It has a nice like Imperial reset play. Um, I think the restriction list actually hurt this deck more than a lot of other purple type decks just because of how this deck kind of flows together. Um, and, you know, some people have compared this to being, you know, a weaker version of the EX4 um what is it the uh, alter s deck i guess it's coming out in ex4 um but you know i, I really like this deck just because you know it's imperial and you know vmon is in you know purple now uh, it's actually in a purple deck so uh quite happy with that um but going on with the deck list we got the demi Merriman eggs best egg in purple hands down regardless um so you're playing the, you're still playing obviously the vmon wormmon combo because it's really what you Really, they're the only, only rookies you kind of want to see as far as getting your combo started. Um, but we put the Ignite Mon into the deck, and I think, and like I said, and I think I said this in a lot of uh, in another video, but I think Ignite Mon is one of the best, um, you know, floatable generic purple cards that we've received really kind of since like Psych and Gazi. Like, instead of him being a you know floodgate type of card this is just a generically super strong uh rookie card just for the color purple itself um being able to swing blow up one of your cars delete an unsuspended digimon or just blow up one of your cars is really good it can blow up your scatter mode it can blow up your imperial jamon uh fighter mode which lets you which you know pr you know helps you with a like a reset combo so there is a reset combo with this uh with ignite mon um, but also, like, when you play a Digimon by an effect, you gain one memory. And as you know, like, uh, when you do, when, if this is in your stack and you end up playing out the, um, you know, you end up playing out, um, like, the Pale Jamon or Dino Beamon, you actually can gain a memory back because you're playing it from the trash to the board and things like that. So there's just a lot of different things. Also, if this, if this like, like, for instance, if you have Ignite Mon in the stack of, like, one of your level fours, um, you can, and you use, like, a uh, Night Raid, and you call a card out. Well, Night Raid becomes a one-cost call-out, so now um, that gives me room to Digivolve and actually go up the chain to... Um, you know, into Imperial. So Ignite Mon just provides a lot of different, a, a new strategy and a lot of different ways for you to utilize him in the deck to uh, execute your strategy for either less memory cost or resetting your Imperial combos. Um, you obviously, you have the Worm on Vmon. It's always been kind of difficult which one you'd rather um, ride in your, or place into your egg zone. Like, which one do you want to Digivolve on top of your egg? Um, I usually think that, like, if I Digivolve Vmon in that area, then that means that I think that I, at that point, I want the Wormmon search ability. I value that more than what Vmon's um, discard uh, and draw to. Because Vmon's effectively is, like, discard an Imperial type piece um, or free and then draw two cards so he's kind of like our sister mon blanc and the worm mon does the top three search uh where you get to add one trash one bottom deck one um obviously of the free and imperial name um so it's, it's really kind of like a game uh you, you know a player decision on which one you want to put into the egg zone if you do at all you know because i really think that i just rather grab, the, grab their on play abilities but there is a case within this deck where you want to have something in the egg zone to raise up to play one of these cards and then go up the chain into your imperial jermon so um they're really a game time decision i'm running two copies of scatter mode as part of the level four package here you know we have the flame drawn shade jermon but i'm running two scatter mode i know there are some builds that run like uh four scatter mode and like an ice mon um you know regular ice mon and things like that but I cut down scatter mode because really, really, you don't, it, he's kind of like a help me facilitate card. And, you know, there is something where you can just call him out just to have scatter mode, but, um, to accelerate your trash, but really he's not 
the greatest card in this deck even though he's a really good generically purple card again just like Aizmaj is a good generic uh purple card um this deck is definitely a little bit tighter when it comes to more of an archetypal support so if anything you rather see the shade Dramon, flame Dramon. and when it gets to a point where you you've got your full combo and everything and now it's about how many times can i reset it uh before my opponent can you, you know while i'm destroying my opponent or can i just keep my stack up while i'm destroying my opponent uh, scatter mode just becomes really a dead card um, and doesn't really help out your game plan and what you want to do um, and then obviously we have the shade drama flame drama you guys know what their effects are the wind digivolving effects and the then the activate one below so there's that I was tacking in the um, bt8 flame drama the, the the blue red one in this deck and uh, while it was it was just cute and it's still something that you could probably cut stuff stuff to tech in but um it, you know it's just something I you know I felt like this list was just a little bit better without it, it just flowed a lot easier uh, than having in there but having that as an extra name for like what shade your mind can bring out you know it's pretty decent and it's a free type so it is a discard target for your v mom um so then you have dino b and impale german again the same things one gives security attack and herbal one gives attack and unsuspended like the thing about this deck and the reason why i'm not running floodgates in this deck is because this deck really doesn't care about floodgates this deck's not reducing digivolution costs this deck is not reducing play costs it's not doing um anything it does have a few memory game plays here and there but you know even without the you know memory game plays you're still like nuking you're still the goal of this deck is still to try and just nuke the opponent's board and you know swing face to face with whatever their biggest stack is um and then knock out some security i mean i mean that's what that's effectively what this deck does so you're really so that's why i don't play floodgates because you really don't kind of care about the, your opponent's floodgates and you're not really trying to floodgate your opponent you're really kind of trying to respond and aggress um against them um, and then we have four dragon mode and four uh, fighter mode. Uh, I've been debating on whether I should run three or four copies of uh, fighter mode. Um, you know, but I'm sticking with it at four for right now, just because it's a name. It's an imperial in name. It's a free type. It's something. It's a target for Vmon and Wormmon. Um, you know, and it's uh, you know, obviously the the card that you want to be in, especially for your resets, and he's just really important to your resets. Which is why I'm not playing level sevens because you know, if your opponent does destroy this, now obviously if it gets bounced, nothing you can do about that. But um, if you're if this does happen to be destroyed or anything like that, then you get to put out Wormon Vmon back to the board again, and you know, either do a reset if it's still your turn, or um, you know, you can have a pretty decently wide board, and that's two attacks on your opponent's security that could clutch a game for you so um that's really why i wanted to just keep it at four and four obviously dragon mode is the most important one to get into and if you're going to be stuck on a card you want to be stuck on dragon mode but more or less you want to be stuck on fighter mode but you want to get to dragon mode first before fighter uh so there are times where you would have to just discard your fighter and just take the l like okay well i'll have one less fighter this game but the card that you don't want to see discarded the card that you don't want to see in security or anything like that is your dragon mode and so there is cause to where you want to probably get cards that can add this uh these back to your hand but um this is a fast moving deck and we're not looking to play the longest game possible um so for the out here so this is kind of like something that i've been experimenting with and testing out i love double night raid in the deck because um being able to call out the level two card again you can call out an ignite mon you can call out a worm mon with this card and then if like let's say like i said if you have an ignite mon stack on the board already then you're effectively playing this for one which is really nice um <clears throat> but this is just an easy two cost option if your opponent chokes you to two whatever the case is uh you know you can use this card just to get a purple rookie out and then try and ch try and go up the chain into your fighter mode um i put in two copies of jack ray it's a card i'm just testing out um just think, <clears throat> again i'm playing one copy of the memory tamer um and again that ratio might may or may not change I'm, I you can cut down like an analog youth to play another copy of him but i've tried out the two jack ray just as you know one is a security bomb to give me back some memory too uh you know sometimes when you're you know your trash is getting filled at, at a high rate you can hit 10 20 cards in trash and this is just something where you can utilize to help extend combos extend plays or just give yourself a chance to uh get your combo off 
Uh, like I said, Calling from the Darkness is one of the most important cards in this deck. It's a combo reset, and it is just, you know, it's Calling from the Darkness. Um, I think this getting hit to one really hurt the really hurt this deck in specific because this deck definitely relied on calling from the darkness to do a lot of the combo reset plays with fighter mode and getting back your uh dragon mode copies and fighter mode copies to your hand so this is definitely a card that you want to you know when you when you get to it you want to use it when you need it in more of an emergency situation than anything else um, playing two Miss Boost. The Miss Boost is just here to help, I guess, accelerate the trash a little bit. I mean, I, I'm not a big, too big of a fan of it because it is random, like what you trash on the top and then you draw one. Um, this card, you, you know, and sometimes again, you can do trash two fighter modes, draw into a dragon mode, or trash two dragon mode, draw into a calling for you know, draw into a night raid or analog, you know. So it is random what you can trash off the top, but um, again, it's just a way that you can, ri you know, and again, when you play this card, just do risk assessment, you know, like is this the appropriate time to drop this card, yay or nay. Uh, one copy of Deathclaw, again, it's another card that can reset the combo and can, like, pop something off the board. But again, you know, I, I think you don't necessarily need this card in the deck. So I can see if you were to cut Deathclaw and play Taikamiya, I just wanted another card where it was a, where I can do a self-reset without relying on Ignite Mon attacking or, um, and you already, you only have one calling from the darkness. So this is just kind of like a one-off extra. Um, and then I have one tie and three analog youth in here. Again, you can change this ratio. You know, there's again, this deck is definitely not solved. It's something that we can experiment with and try out different ratios at for what you do and do not want to see. Obviously, you want to recognize what is the meta going forward with all of that. Um, but with the tie Kamiya, it's just a memory setter and gives you an extra security attack so that you can, you know, kind of press the advantage um, a little harder. Uh, and then the analog use because you're level fives. Uh, and there are some times where you're stuck on a Dino B and or a Pyodramon, so you might as well just like, hey, look, uh, I got a Vmon in this deck. They're sitting at 10k. Let me just swing in. You know, this deck, you want to get damage in as often as possible as well. So if your level fives do die because you can't get up to your Dragon Mode or anything like that, or if you do have full combo, these help you gain the memory back, hatch an egg, and, um, you know, part of your, like, your reset combos. But again, they're also part of, like, hey, I can, if, if, if I'm swinging with my level fives, at least I get their on deletion ability to play a V mod, play a Wormon, and then I get their on play abilities so that I can search and try to build up for the next time. So it's one of the things where I don't mind being stuck on them for the purpose of I can still get value out of them being destroyed. Um, but that's the deck profile, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, definitely know, let me know what you guys think. And uh, if you guys are playing with this deck in the BT11 format, let me know what you guys are playing. Uh, but I got to go to work. This is Carfight King, and I'm out.